you can see the results from this uh, last batch of blocks where I added the second layer which is pretty terrible very depressing I see a lot of them the growth is already pretty much stopped and uh, the aborts already getting some mold on them, so I'll have to chop everything down today even though some of it doesn't look like it's very mature the ones that I spoon the top are looking like they're doing a little bit better at least some of the pins that would form up underneath are getting their way to the top but you can see here it's kind of causing some difference in size and maturity you get like a couple really large ones there's the other one I spooned the top um, these ones on day 13 that I spoon not far enough along really to to judge how well they're doing compared to compared to everything else I'm thinking those probably gonna have the, the same problems as these ones now something I should mention on these ones where I've just packed the uh, casing mix down hard on I realized the other day that I blew the outlet to my uh, broiler plate that I was using to pasteurize the vermiculite in a big kettle and so I never actually even pasteurized it it just pretty much sat in there in uh, the hot water that I put in so interestingly enough these casings are not pasteurized other than just adding the lime which might be uh, good enough by itself in fact I don't know even vermiculite probably has low enough nutrition that you can, might be able just to get it wet put it on there but I wouldn't trust that just because there's probably other dust and junk in there but you can see pins coming up there and there and all the white growth I see on top looks like the same short high fade King oyster mycelium that I should, I should expect and not the white sclerotina mycelium so I think that might be uh, the solution to all this is just to put that real heavily packed layer of casing mix on top to force uh, the mycelium underneath to grow through it but in the meantime I thought about probably really the end all would be to just take each bag and break it up completely and then add the casing mix to it now these I did a couple days ago and you can see my psyllium is almost regrown completely back together the pieces of grain almost always lag behind everything else and hopefully that all colonize back together without any mold problems but of course if I break it all up and then throw the casing mix on top it uh, definitely won't have any issues of pinning on the sides before it pins on the top and although I did pack the top down a, a decent bit I didn't pack it as hard as the ones over there and uh, also too since the bags are a bit squishy when you break it up it kind of flexes the top a little bit when you set it so it really isn't going to get as uh, firmly packed as the other ones but I'm thinking that's probably not going to be necessary as long as it's packed uh, decent enough down there that uh, any bits of uh, grain or stuff that's underneath this casing layer will get colonized before mold hits it <clears throat> before mold hits it so I feel pretty confident that these will work but I really don't want to have to be breaking up each bag down here because that was just uh, a lot of work although I did I did figure out a good way of uh, breaking it up I just got a just a, a length of hardwood board and you kind of just score it in a, a cross thatching pattern down the one side of the bag flip it over score it Again, you can either you can either use two hands and break it like that, or I was just smacking it like that. But just be careful that you don't uh, break open the bag. 
And of course, you could use like a uh, probably a piece of steel pie for or something blunt and heavy to break it up. But that was far easier doing it that way than trying to squeeze it apart with your hands. You can also try karate chopping in the same cross hatch cross hatch pattern around the bag, and that'll break it up pretty good too. But I'm gonna see if these bags fully colonize and survive. And I still have a lot of hope for uh, these ones over here. Oh, this one's making some good pins right here, you can see. Hopefully the uh, packing the top down hard is gonna be the solution. And uh, heck, if I can get away without even pasteurizing the vermiculite, that'd be great too. So, so maybe in all this mess, I've discovered some uh, things to make my life easier in the end. You know, that's always hopeful. All right, we'll take a look at this in a few more days. So even with these blocks where I just uh, packed the mycelium down, I didn't scrape the top, still looks like it's lagging a bit behind. You can see the, the pinning on the side here, yet there's no pins on top yet. Just because the mycelium again is growing through and yes, it's eating up any uncolonized sawdust, but it's still creating a delay. Although you can see some of these, I am getting pins on. But I gotta try to get to 100% results with this. That's why I think still breaking it up and casing it might be the way to go. And fortunately, these have fully recovered and grown back together in just about three days. So I finally got a few days of dry weather outside, which helped dry everything out down here. And I missed it a couple times. These second flush blocks, I gave a good saturation, getting the casing mix uh, fully wet. And anytime you think the casing mix might be dry, just give it a test with the, the mister from your hose. And if it blows away easily, you know that it definitely needs to be uh, re-wetted. I didn't get a very good flush off these second uh, flush blocks. I think probably because, oh, the pinning triggers are still out of whack. I have a few mushrooms you can see here that started pinning before I even picked anything, so. I think probably once you get it off kilter at the start, it has trouble uh, getting back to where it wants to be to fruit off the top properly. And all these second flush blocks are about the same. Now, these are the first blocks that finished up where I used the spoon. And that's definitely not the way it's gonna work. You can see, at least I have some larger mushrooms, but I still need smaller, more numerous. And some of the blocks didn't produce hardly anything. And some of the blocks even, see back here, got a little bit of uh, white mold started again where I must have had a, a piece of the top still exposed. And then the ones that, <clears throat> I pack the top down, look like they're going to behave about the same, maybe a little bit better, but they're still only getting a couple pins starting off at the top, and it's pinning around the sides. But the good news is that these blocks, where I broke them up completely, then cased them. You can see no pins around the sides and lots of pins developing on the top. Pretty much on every block. Right out of room here. So you can see it's coming up all about the same, which is good. And that probably has to do a lot with breaking it up, really, because then you reset the triggers for every block at the same time. So I think that might be what I'm doing now, from now on. I'll definitely know in several days if I don't get any mold, 
pretty sure this is going to be a good flush. And these ones over here, I packed the top down, didn't break them up. So probably not going to be a lot of good from that. But at least I did leave two bags up here, you can see, with the tops on it. And they're starting to pin around. I want to see how far along I can get the pinning on the top. Maybe cut the bag off and the uh, it'll start to fruit immediately and don't even need to case it or worry about mold so I have to see might even let it go you can see the my slime's about here see if I can let it go all the way to the top and get all that sawdust before I open it well saturating the casing layers of these uh, second flush blocks because I thought they got too dry seemed to be a bad idea because all these mushrooms that are coming up have been having a little bit of uh, white mold again so I've been having to cut them real early I'll probably cut these down the size they are but on these ones that are coming out of third flush you can see they're still producing even one down here pinning pretty good I didn't miss them and uh, so far no problems, but I may still come down early just to be sure. So I think I'm moving ahead here to some better results. These ones that I packed, had to cut them early, had a little white mold popping up on them uh, when they started getting large. You can see here, the ones that I broke the sawdust mixture up are doing pretty good. I think I kind of uh, shot myself in the foot switching to the sunflower mixture. I don't think it's as good as the uh, just the plain old cotton seed meal and sawdust recipe. Doesn't seem to be uh, having as many of the pins mature out but I'll still be happy if I can get them to mature without any mold on them. But that's how I'm doing all this new stuff, new stuff now, breaking it up. Although on these ones, I packed the casing mix down pretty tight. And it's seeming to uh, pin on the sides a little bit. You can see here. And trying to colonize the top, so a little uneven pinning set there, so I think I made a mistake packing the casing mix down too tight, forcing it to grow up through it instead of trying to pin underneath of it. On that note, the ones that I have <clears throat> been packing the casing mix on and not breaking up, uh, they're doing better than the double layer ones, but I'm still having to cut them down early prevent the white mold so these are still what I'm hoping is going to work out best and let's take a look at how these do when they're ready to be cut down <laughs> 